My name is Lewis Smith and I'm a director of Koopman Rare Art, silver dealers in London and we specialise in English and continental silver from the 18th and 19th century. Although our speciality does stretch as far as the 17th and 16th century uh, for particularly English silver. The buyers are not different. It's amazing how many continental buyers and American buyers buy English silver and how many English buyers might buy French silver or German silver. The, the market is really about quality more than it is about origin and the focus of today's world is about quality more than origin. So there are lots of people, I had an American client in today who loves German silver but considers something fantastic in English silver. So there are no rules and the only rules are that you buy the best you can find and something you like a lot. But it is actually the case, there, is, there, are, there are no guidelines. I'm often surprised by... The, the only thing one could say is that if you think about the, the world market, English silver does have a sort of uh, cachet and is far more collectible worldwide, has a much wider audience. English silver is still regarded as a standard by which other uh, people set their heights to, their sights on. And, uh, you know, English silver is generally more collectible on, on an international level than other silver. It depends whether you talk about collectors, you talk about people who like to use the things. I think most people like to have great things in their home, they like to live with the things, and they like to have things that are usable. So a collector that we thought of as a collector a hundred years ago is not the same nature as a collector today. A collector today will live with the things in a different way, they'll use the things in a different way, and they'll be more discerning. So uh, a collector doesn't really have any guidelines about whether they prefer candlesticks over tureens, over uh, candelabra, over drinking vessels. They'll buy things they think they can live with and use, and I think that's the most important guideline for them today. America still has to be a dominant force, and we can never, must never dismiss it as one of the most important uh, areas for collecting. Then TFAF and Maastricht produces a great variation of clients from Russia to Spain to Portuguese to English to American and of course Dutch. Uh, London produces a complete international range of clients. America, when we, when we do antique shows in America, obviously the clients are mostly homegrown and therefore they're mostly American. So again the rules are there for the breaking and they do get broken regularly and we are always surprised by a what our clients choose and b where they come from and uh, their, their decisions about the reasons for collecting.